hello everybody and welcome to Hacking the Passion Economy. In this new webinar series, we will be discussing the power of personal branding and not only how you can leverage the strength of your own personal brand to be successful, but how up and coming industry leaders from across the country and across the creative economy have done so themselves. Before we get into it, I wanna make sure to introduce myself and my startup Sessions. My name is Arielle Winfield and I am the founder and CEO of Sessions, the content creator marketplace. Here at Sessions, we're building a platform that puts the creator first, allowing them to manage and monetize their work with their most engaged and loyal audience. We are building an iOS app that allows creators to monetize their work more easily and sustainably through subscriptions and revenue sharing opportunities with other creators that allow for the most organic growth possible. We will also be connecting our creators with brands looking to, do, uh, to partner with influencers like you. I used to work on Wall Street, but have also been a content creator myself for over six years. And I wanna make sure we bring holistic solutions to any creative looking to build or sustain authentic, engaged communities that also help you make consistent, reliable income. And that comes through things like building a strong personal brand, cultivating niche or subject matter expertise and consistently sharing what you do with the world to find your first true 1000 fans and growing from there. At Sessions, we're focused on making sure creatives can effectively and sustainably monetize their work from the very beginning of their journeys, while also fostering deeper relationships with their audience. Artists like Jason are the perfect example of the type of creatives we want to support. But before we get into the nitty gritty, I want to make sure to introduce our guest, Jason Ivey. Jason Victor Roberts, known professionally as Jason Ivey, is an acclaimed singer-songwriter, sag after actor, an internationally recognized filmmaker from the South Side of Chicago, who has been featured in Self Magazine, Billboard, PBS, Chicago Sun-Times, and Reverb Nation as a top 10 artist. A true performer in every sense, Jason is a former member of a Grammy award-winning choir, an Ivy League acapella group, shout out inspiration, <laughs> and a national DJ collective. Jason comes to the entertainment industry with an educational background in cognitive neuroscience and linguistics from the University of Pennsylvania, along with a fluency in several languages. Jason has seen his work placed in five international festivals and has appeared in dozens of TV and film productions as an actor. Jason won the John Lennon Songwriting Contest as a finalist for R&B following the release of the EP Compliments at number one on iTunes, which was also nominated for Best R&B Soul Album in 2020 for the We Are The Music Makers Awards alongside an eight week billboard number one stint on a compilation album. With a cross platform following of over 860,000 supporters, Jason's goal is to build platforms that allow for the restoration and amplification of routinely marginalized voices while actively um, empowering underserved and underrepresented communities. The next step in this process is the release of Jason's highly anticipated debut album, Divided, in 2022, coming soon, which features several talented national and international artists, an event series, and a feature-length documentary film. So Jason, thank you so much for being here. I am so happy to have you join us as I just yeah, thank you. As I just mentioned in your incredible bio, please tell us about your latest work and the upcoming release of your debut album. For sure. So um, like Ariel mentioned, I am working on my debut album. I've been in the music industry since 2018 officially. Um, that was the moment that I released my first studio recorded single. And now I have progressed through two EPs, several singles here and there, collaborations with other artists in the, in the realm to releasing my own debut full length project. And you've are already exhibited such success in your career from music to documentaries to ed tech and, and more. And this is just the beginning for you. Um, how do you do it? And you know, <laughs> what does having a strong personal brand mean to you? Um, yeah, uh, thank you for pointing out the, the success that I've attained um, in the little bit of time that I've been alive. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I would say I do it by remaining extremely focused and I don't let little obstacles deter me from pursuing the, the final goal, which is, you know, like you said in the bio earlier, building platforms that are sustainable for people to, you know, 
maximize their voice and maximize their input into their communities. Um, so when I've done that, then I think that I've you know, achieved true success. Um, in the meantime, I journal every day. I make sure to write down you know, what steps I took throughout the day to get towards my goal. And recently I've learned that even rest is an integral part of success. You know, like you can't just tire, I guess, endlessly towards a goal because you're going to burn out at some point. And, you know, no one is immune to, to burning out. No one is immune to just imposter syndrome. No one's immune to any of that stuff. I've, I've experienced all of it, even though I'm extremely confident in myself and my abilities and my end goal. Um, but I make sure to stay grounded in the fact that I'm writing this down every night. You know, before I go to sleep, I make a goal to journal everything that happened in the day, good and bad. And just get that out so that it can be processed in an external form and that I'm not internalizing, you know, any sort of doubt about where I'm going or what I'm doing. Um, strong personal brand means you're not willing to sacrifice um, any parts of your, your ethos to make things happen, you know, remaining true to yourself. And um, I guess that re means remaining authentic as well, you know, not selling out in the uh, traditional sense, but also knowing what it takes to get somewhere. You can't be so headstrong and, and hard-headed that you can't uh, compromise in order to achieve your goals. You have to, it's a delicate balance that you have to maintain in, in order to reach those goals, but remain true to who you are. So I think, like I said, remaining grounded, being very intentional about everything that I do, every connection that I make, every sentence that I say to someone else, um, it's all very well thought out. It's all very intentional. And um, I think that at the end of the day, that helps you know, slowly, stepwise, uh, build to where I'm trying to be. Absolutely. I love how you pointed out intentionality and authenticity, because that's something that I say all the time. Like, it's so important to show up as your full authentic self and no matter what it is that you're doing, because then if you're not, you're trying to be someone else or you're trying to emulate something that isn't true to what you care about or what you do. And it just doesn't lend to you being successful in the best possible way that you can be. Um, I want you to tell us a little bit more about your personal brand. Like, what is your why? As in, why do you do what you do and what drives you? Or what is your North Star? And how do you translate that into how you show up into the world through your art, business, anything else? And I would say my why, my North Star, um, like I said, is just helping as many people as I can. Um, and that includes helping myself, better myself, um, just get to a, a place of, of improvement every day, you know, being better than the person that I was yesterday. And that may be a two steps backward, one step forward type thing sometimes, and it may be a 10 steps ahead and, and now I wait type thing. And every day it changes. I think that the pacing is not um, equal on a day-to-day -day basis, but at the end of the week or at the end of the month or at the end of the year, at, if you're looking at everything, all the progress that you've made, you know, you're definitely going to notice that you've made some large strides if you are consistent and intentional. So my North Star, my why is helping people that look like me, helping people that are marginalized, uh, other people of color, other um, otherized groups, <laughs> no pun intended. I think there's always room for conversations to be had that will change how other people see each other. And how has it been for you as a creative and building up your social media following? Oh, yeah, that's really difficult. Um, like you said, these social media outlets control creatives and influencers in the same way that record labels control their artists and even artists outside of their fold. Um, they set the tone. You know, you can't go somewhere else to post on Instagram. You've got to go to Instagram to make a post like that. You know, they, they don't want any competition. They won't have it. Um, so you just got to learn to play their game. So it's, it's extremely difficult to grow a following on really any platform except for TikTok, um, because they haven't controlled their algorithm in the same way that these other companies have. And, you know, it's nothing that we're doing as creators. I've, I've had conversations with friends that work at Facebook, at Instagram, at Snapchat. They'll tell you that it's because it's becoming increasingly pay to play. You know, you've got to have some ads um, going for your content and you'll see it. You'll, it'll say, you know, this post is doing very well. Do you want to throw $5 behind it? And you're like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> right. My followers are seeing it, right? And they're like, they are, I think, but they're not, you know, that your followers aren't seeing anything. Yeah, no, it's so true. It's just very difficult to, to build up any sort of audience on these platforms. And, and even on TikTok, like you can build a following, but it, it's always 
down to like virality at the end of the day, like what yeah. video is going to go viral and there's no way to predict that. You know what I mean? So if you just have to count on virality to be popular rather than what you're really bringing to the table and the value that you're offering people, it just, it still doesn't put the power in your own hands as a creator, which is, can be very frustrating. Exactly. And then figuring out what I wanted to prioritize really helped me. Yeah. See, and that also shows that it, you have to be secure and confident enough in yourself to talk about the things that you do and to talk about your successes, because if you don't talk about it and it isn't out there, how are people supposed to know? But if you had to share your secrets to success, or in other words, your best tips for leveraging the skills that you have to create opportunities for yourself and make money from what you do, what would you share? I would say be resilient, um, be resourceful, and you know, really just have like a list of core values that you, for yourself that you don't want to abandon. Resourcefulness and also resilience. You know, if you get knocked down, down three times, get up seven or however many you need to yeah. get up to, to get the job done. But basically don't stay down, you know, and if you need to stay down for a little bit of rest, do that. But, you know, eventually get back up and, and fight harder and learn the lessons that the universe is trying to teach you. I believe that the universe is a, a cyclical teacher. That means that if you're not learning the lesson the first time, it'll bring the lesson back around for you to like get it again. And when you get that, then it'll be like, all right, bet, like here's the next one. So I've, I've been learning my lessons and writing them down and then like proving to the universe that I've learned those lessons. I think everybody can learn something from that for sure. What makes you excited about sessions and, and how can you leverage a platform like ours when it's ready, of course, to strengthen your brand and the community that you've built around it? Yeah, um, so I sort of mentioned that the work that I do is here to create conversations that will either inform people or will um, shift perspectives, uh, et cetera. So I think that sessions providing the platform for collaboration and or one-to-one uh, -one partnerships and or just conversation will be a game changer. You know, the, the more that you can sit and talk to other individuals and, and learn from what they've experienced and even exchange ideas, you know, then I think that the potential is infinite. I've met some of the biggest advocates for my music career um, during the pandemic, and that was through a digital interface, you know? So I think that the more platforms we have like this with creators like you behind it, um, who understand, you know, on a very authentic and personal level, what it takes to be successful, the setbacks that we experience as a people, um, I think that we'll be better off for that. It's really, really good to hear your story, Jason. But what, what would you say to the young creative or even the older creative who wants to, to really start realizing some of their dreams and build their own brands in future? What would you say they should just out the gate when they know nothing and are just new to this whole thing, really know they want to do it. What would you say to them or how would you guide them in the beginning? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the compliment and, and thank you for the uh, engaging question. Um, I would say the first thing to do when you know nothing about you know, what you're trying to maybe achieve, but you do have an idea, is to write down every aspect of that idea. You know, fully, fully follow every thought write it down. I don't know if it's a piece of paper or if it's your Apple notes, like get that completely out. Um, the second step would then be to find a creator that you, you know, admire, maybe two or three of those. Discover where your aspirations and their aspirations may intersect and see what their strong suits might be and what yours might be. That's the best way to, I guess, achieve when you know, when you're starting from like ground zero, is to model yourself after someone that you admire or respect. Um, the third thing would be to treat it like a business. And um, whether that means going out and starting an LLC or an S corp or and literally, you know, corporate incorporating yourself, it takes a while to get there. It's not going to happen overnight. So don't be discouraged. Um, and that goes for someone starting in the, at their career. That goes for someone pivoting or changing careers. At every stage, be willing to learn um, from others around you and, and model yourself after the you that you want to be. So I just want to close it out by saying thank you so much to all of our attendees for being here today. And thank you to our amazing guest, Jason Ivey. Clap, clap, clap. <laughs> so please make sure to go follow him on social media at 
the Jason Ivy and follow sessions as well. Our tag is sessions MP and our website is sessionsmp.com. Tasha says, this was excellent. Please do more. Yes, we definitely will be doing more. This is going to be a series that I conduct. So thank you so much again. I'm just so grateful that all of you guys attended and I hope you were able to take a lot away from this conversation. Um, and yeah, can't wait to have you guys all involved in sessions moving forward.